This album made numbers then it. Jesus Christ. I look at the Spotify streams and a lot of these motherfuckers have over a half a billion streams here. That's crazy. I, I feel like I haven't heard any of their songs. Hope I, I think I'm guessing that at least one of these songs is gonna be like, oh yeah, that's that one song that I heard when I was 10 years old or some shit like that. I've never heard this album. Arctic Monkeys AM. Let's go for it. I'm expecting some Tame Impala type of things. Do you ever get that feel that you can't shift the tide that sticks around like so much in your teeth? Crawling back to you. Never thought I'd call and run. You're out of you. I like that. I actually like the chorus. The chorus links up with the with the guitar line or the guitar riff very nicely i can kind of see how this song would make a lot of numbers because it's the, the lyrics are very relatable and it's just yes yeah, it's, it's a pop song it's a pop rock uh song so far That's nice. I like that song. That song was actually pretty nice. It kind of reminds me of um, the band One Republic. That's the band that made Counting Stars. That that song was also really big in big, big in 2013. When it comes to the subject matter, this reminds me of The Less I Know the Better. And also another big rock song that came out two years after this. And in the sense that it, it talks about love and it uses a very interesting angle, right? In the case of The Less I Know the Better, as the title suggests, it's like this girl has moved on and you're, you're just left there to be like, oh yeah, The Less I Know the Better. Ignorance is bliss. I don't want to know if she's fucking some other dude, if she's back with this or back with that. It's just The Less I Know the better in this case this could be interpreted in two different ways one being do i like you being in a relationship and it might be falling apart and it's like do i want to know do i want to know if you actually still love me or you might be pursuing this girl and you just want to know if the feelings are reciprocal and now that i realize that the second track off of this album is called are you mine so that might fall into the same storyline might have we might have ourselves a little story here of a decaying relationship or a guy pursuing a girl and the girl just giving him mixed feelings. I'm a puppet on a string, Tracy Island, time traveling, diamond, could a sheep call a I thought that the B was gonna switch there. She's a silver lining, lone ranger riding through an open space. Okay, I like that little breakdown. That's that was very unique. I like went this way, went that way, kinda went silent, and then it came back and the chorus just hit. I like that, but everything everything else I didn't really fuck with that much. It was just kind of bland, you know. And that's the thing that I that I felt from this album. Like I had a feeling that some of these songs might fall into like a panic at the disco level like i don't really listen to panic at the disco like that but might be just songs that are just kind of bland kind of iffy and this kind of falls into that category as well like the guitar and everything is nice but it's just like i don't know the the artist's voice and just like the the verses and everything it just doesn't really flow with me that much okay let's see where this goes you see you miss an opportunity there because that point right there if he just said that whole thing monotone like just on the same level it would have actually i feel like it would have been better than what we got here because it's like uh, like it just doesn't really fall with me Josh Home is definitely the biggest highlight from the song. Like his falsettos, they're very nice. And they add to that aesthetic because this kind of seems like kind of westerny. And when I think of western, I just think of that, like a falsetto like that in, in an instrumental like this, which is, it, it, it's nice. It fills in, make, makes the song very atmospheric. <laughs> Okay, 
but overall, I like that song. Is it better than Do I Want to Know? No, but it is a highlight. It's definitely, um, it's, a, it's a nice song, honestly. And I feel like that one for the road falsetto is going to stick with me for sure. Oh, you're teasing me like that. I like that. Yeah, man, definitely a highlight. I really like the bass line that you got on the verses, especially in the first half. And then in the chorus, it teases you, right? Because it doesn't give you the full guitar at once. It gives you like little snippets. And in the second half of the chorus, you get like the whole, the, dr the drum just slides in and just takes over the whole half of that chorus. And yeah, overall, I really like that song. I must say that this is a very 2013 album so far. Like, that's not a bad thing. But I made that One Republic, that, well, the guys that made Counting Stars, I believe it's One Republic, the name of that band. I made that comparison before, but it just it just feels like it, you know? Like, it's not like the technology back then. It was like in the 70s or something like that. That was less than 10 years ago. But still, it's like I can just feel that energy. And it kind of brings me back to those times, right, when Let Her Go was still on the radio, when Safe and Sound was still on the radio, like back when those songs were still in. And um, honestly, I wish I heard this album back then, like on the radio a little bit more. I just wasn't paying attention because I would have like a little bit more emotional attachment into these songs because these songs are very well crafted. And a lot of those songs that were popular back then weren't, right? And I could definitely use some substance in my music background. but. That's what we got. That we don't. We don't have that. We we can just wish. In a typical rock star mentality, Alex wants every lovely encounter with a beautiful woman to keep on. He's just so damn eloquent about it all, about it all. I want it all. That's nice. Yeah, I guess that, that a fan wrote this because there's no way that a genius dude contributor could do that. But yeah, that's a nice song. That's a nice song. I don't feel like it drags on. A lot of these, I'm not going to say that because it's a cliche now. That every time I say that, there's like a 10 minute song directly next to it. But it is a nice song, though, I must say. It's not anything better than that. It's not anything worse than that. It's just a nice song. Yeah, man, number one, Party Anthem might come out to be one of my favorite, if not my favorite song off of this album. It's a little slower than any of the tracks that we've heard so far, but it is it is definitely a vibe, man. Like, this is just, there's nothing sad about the lyrics or anything like that, but there's like a comfort, comforting feeling that you get in this in this whole track. It's like the same feeling that you get from listening to like a Sinatra, Frank Sinatra song. I don't know Sinatra like that, but like some of the slower ballads, like obviously that's to another level, but here you get kind of that same feeling of like, okay, like I should be around like a campfire or something listening to this. It's, it's pretty nice. I like it. Is this gonna be a ballad as well? Cause that would be very welcome to you. Mad sounds in your ears. Pose, you've gotta do what you gotta do. We just weren't feeling how we wanted to. Mad sounds in your ears. 
My light went out. That's crazy. I don't know if it's the light going out or something like that, but I just had like a fucked up thought coming into my head right now. I really like this song and I really like the way that it just has mad sounds or, you know, refer to music. But I just imagine like, uh, like you know, the girl from uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, like the girl that was like in the cult. I just imagine that girl like dancing and the camera just going like all around her and shit like that. And it just kind of seems like a song that let's just say that your girlfriend, you know, casually just dies and you're reminiscing on the times that you had with her and like this dream that you have or this imagination is of her dancing right to a song off of this like with this sound with this you know slow tempo music that you can hear and it's like oh yeah like i can finally see her being happy it's a representation of when she's in heaven she's also very happy as well she's in a happier place a better place that's just where my mind went that's not even what the lyrics said but that's just kind of the the feeling that i get from this song especially with the ooh la 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 ooh la la like that thing it's very like heavenly or maybe linking this up with do i want to know you're using these mad sounds to distract your girlfriend of the fact that you're in a dying relationship right like mad sounds in your ears make you feel all right like okay don't worry about everything or don't worry about the drama don't worry about that shit just listen to this music and everything will be okay a little bit of a stretch but the songs here are not that lyrical so i'm just using my imagination to fill in those spots All these secrets that I can't keep Do what I found Has it gone for good Or is it coming back around Isn't it hard to make up your mind And your fuse is by your side I love me some toxicity. I'm really liking the songs. These songs, oh, we, we've had a pretty good run so far from Arabella all the way to Fireside. It's a pretty good run so far. And I really like how in the chorus it says, has it gone for good or is it coming back around? Meaning that if it comes back around, meaning that if you're go getting back in this relationship, it's not good for you. It's a toxic relationship. And I really like when songs deal with that. Because it's a, it's a compelling point. Your emotion, it's like your, your, your whole brain is going to war against itself. Like your emotions are on the bad side, right? They want you to get back with that girl, even though she's bad for you. And your conscious side, your intelligent side is telling you to not do that. It's just an eternal battle. I really like when songs execute that perfectly, right? I don't feel like it's overused that much, but it's, it goes hard. It's really nice. a little bit forced that long title like i appreciate the long title but you don't have to implement it into the chorus right like you can make that sentence just shorter or just split it into two bars right you don't gotta just you can't just you should I'll give you props there. You fit that very nicely there because it rhymed. Short song, man. Like that song just came in and came out. I was like, we're already in the outro. And yeah, that was that was short. I like that. I actually did like that song. It, it came around. To, yeah, it was it was nice. I like the guitar. And it's just a, a nice pop rock song. It just is. It's not that deep. It's just, yeah, it's just what the title says. Why'd you only call me when you're high? I thought that it was going to be about a girl calling him only when she is high, but it is the girl saying this to the guy, right? And it just seems kind of needy now because I Am has come out to be some of the songs here, Fireside, Do I Want to Know, Are You Mine? And now why you always call me when you're high? Or about this guy there is just needy. Like, he, this guy seriously want this chick. And this chick, sadly, well, clearly he doesn't want him. This next track is called Snap Out Of It. So this might be just him realizing how needy he's being. Okay, bass. Ooh. 
Yeah, man, she ain't gonna fuck you. Yeah, she, she's, she's moved on. Okay, you're, you're acting very needy. You're kind of making a fool out of yourself. I'll be honest with you. I thought that you were gonna, you know, realize the fact that you're, you're being too needy. But now nah, you want her to snap out of, snap out of her being yourself. Or she's kind of snapping in of it, if that makes sense, right? Like she just doesn't fuck with you. Yeah, from the song's sake, it's not my favorite. Honestly, like the guitar and everything is nice, but just the subject matter kind of just gives it all a bad taste because it's like, I want to just like shake your shoulders or some shit like that and make her fall in love with you. Not gonna work, man. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Try to fish with some other chick. Pretty good song, I must say. One thing is that out of all these songs that we've heard so far, this is probably the one that drags on a little bit too much. One thing that I must say, though, is the fact that in, I really like the bridge. I really like the incorporation of a bridge and the little interlude from Josh Holm because he's just been a heat check player. Like Every time he comes in, he just straight up delivers. And with that falsetto, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. I, 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 I like the song. I actually do. It's not my favorite off of this album. In the About section, it says perhaps the album's best song is Sucked Away just before it ends. I don't think it's the best on this album. Like I really like number one party anthem. I really like fire sign. I also really like... Do I want? I don't. I like. I don't really like. Do I want to know? But I also. F I feel like that's a very nice song, but um, especially number one party anthem and fireside are really good, and um, when it comes to the instrumentals and stuff like that, sure those songs are a little bit slower. This has a lot more going to it, and from what I understand, this is a band, so a lot of the band members have a lot more contribution in this song. Unlike a song like Number One Party Anthem, where the instrumental is a little bit more simple, minimalistic. I guess that tells you, in the case of Arctic Monkeys, I just like those slower ballads or those more abstract instrumentals or abstract songs in this album more than the, the upbeat songs because I feel like those upbeat songs fall into like a box, right? Like it's pretty, it's a pretty nice box, but I feel like they all follow the same structure and we're 11 tracks in and it doesn't really impress me that much. It's a good song, but it doesn't really tell me like, oh yeah, this doesn't sound like the best, the best song off of this album. I wouldn't say that. And yeah, that was AM by Arctic Monkeys, their 2013 album. And I must say that I have mixed feelings about this album, okay? It has some good songs, but I also, <clears throat> you know, I came into this album thinking that it was going to be something like more experimental, more indie, something like Tame Impala. That's really not the case. It's a little bit more poppy. And I guess that makes sense. That one of the reasons probably that it made so many numbers and did so well on the streaming side of things is because it just appeals to a bigger audience. Looking at every single song independently, I can see how this song could fit into a playlist, this song could fit into that playlist, but looking at the album as a whole, this is a pretty good album. I'm gonna be honest, like this is a this is a nice album. This is good. The runtime is pretty good, and I like how every single song here brings something new to the table. Like it just does, doesn't seem like okay, this one song. Like all you mind is the only exception, really. But after that, every single song, it feels like has to be there. There's no like a filler song. There's not like a song like oh yeah, I listen to the song on this reaction, but I I won't listen to the song because do I want to know it's better? or X song is better, whatever. This album is also very relatable, and I feel like that's one of the reasons why it has so many streams, is because a song like Do I Wanna Know, or Why You Only Call Me When You're High, or Fireside, or even Mad Sounds, 
are things that just happen to people, right? Like, I want to be yours. Like, there's probably a bunch of guys right there. A bunch of guys just DMing a bunch of chicks and getting rejected or something like that. Or having a crush in high school or school. And fantasizing about them. I want to be yours is a perfect song to feel that emotion. Would I listen to this album again through and through? Probably. Probably at least once or twice more. Because this album has a lot of these songs that just help capture an emotion right because one of the cool things about listening to a lot of music is the fact that you get like oh yeah i can listen to the song when i'm feeling this emotion this very specific emotion now i have a song to put under that emotion but yeah with that said i'm gonna give up my awards for this album for my takeoffs i'm gonna say do i want to know fireside and number one party anthem my takeout is gonna be snap out of it even though i kind of praise it for a second i must say that the neediness just got to me and i feel like are you mine which is the other contender for the takeout is is a song that will grow on me i feel like that's song i listen to it right now and i feel like it's just gonna grow on me i just feel like it would and my lyrical liverpool just because of the tangent that i went on my fictional just oh yeah what if my girlfriend dies or some shit like that i'm gonna say mad sounds but yeah that's arctic monkeys am tell me what you think about this album maybe i'll react to another album of theirs because they've been around for a while now i don't know if they were tired or something like that i don't i barely know anything about their music but if you want me to listen to any uh, another of their albums tell me and yeah tell me what your favorite song from this album is and yeah that's pretty much it